And as the last band comes in, gentlemen, what do we expect to change other than the bands that haven't really? Well, there's your first answer. Kalissa going to be picked up here. Uh, the Ash was banned out earlier this time around. So now the question is, does Maokai Jace go to T1? Are they going to be interested in taking that? Rel was actually passed over. It's such a big one for owner. Uh, there is obviously answers that they could go towards, like the Cenotype lanes, uh, like some of those aggressive lanes that we've seen with Caitlyn and Varus as well. Also wondering if they want to pick up the Aatrox here or go for the counter pick again. Zayus was such a big part of what made the previous game um, work. And the Renata pickup is a no-brainer yeah. that has to be taken away to both deny Chris the champion I think he's looked the most impressive on, as well as deny specific that Rene uh, Kalista Renata combo that has been so successful. Even so at last game, even with the laning phase, they got a slight lead, but it wasn't like they completely blew out the lane. But in mid-game skirmishes, playing against it becomes incredibly hard. And we'll see what other answer is going to get picked up here. Personally, I would love to see Owner on his rel, try to pick it up maybe in rotation. And this is Guma Yushi's Draven, oh, yeah. a champion that he debuted on as well. Extremely aggressive and really strong into the Kalista. This is one of the many problems you have about dealing with T1 on red side. You go for Kalista first pick, something that does have a lot of lane power. One of the only ADs that can really fight fire with fire down there is the Draven. I would like the, the Senna again, though. I think for Crisp, it's a strong laner. Uh, we've seen this actually work pretty well in the past also. But this is a tough lane to deal with. And I have that to is, see if Crisp is confident to go for it. It is going to be locked in here. So the final pick on the blue side here rests in Xiaohu's hands. Could be full Shadow Isles with a, uh, a Maokai lock in here. But <laughs> I don't know whether you're necessarily super excited uh, about seeing a Maokai. We'll see where Xiaohu is going to go. I kind of expect a jungler just to keep these solo lanes a little bit more up in the air, unless they just want to grab the Aatrox and make sure that can't be banned away. But no, it is going to be the three-piece Shadow Isles with the Maokai lock. And specifically, Weiwei obviously had an amazing game. It wasn't enough, but his early ganks were really good. And if the team didn't fall behind the way that they did, might have been able to set up objectives the way we've seen Maokai do really uh, since last year at Worlds. Champion has been around for a while now. Now, T1 can either try and secure owner his rel if he do wants to go in that direction. Poppy's another that we know he loves, and Poppy into Kalista specifically, I think is a really good angle. Silas, also a good okay. option. It's available for Faker this time. And anytime Maokai's there, it's really, really strong to be able to have that counter engage. You basically just have the more powerful version of that ultimate. Sen ult has some value for cross map as well. So uh, definitely a strong angle and also a pretty good denial pick for some of the things that you might expect them to go towards. And also, it does mean that T1 is now forced to ban away. Blind Silas can obviously be punished. The Jace, I think Zhao actually had a great game on the Jace last time around. Yeah. They were able to play around and these new elves didn't really end up mattering when we got to the fights. But T1 going to try and make sure that Faker does actually get through the lane. Last time around, we saw Weibo target owner, and I think they're going to try again. Even though it didn't work out, his league was still incredible. Poppy and Rel, to me, are no-brain bans here. Yep, the Sejuani will still be up and available, though. And Permafrost True. value alongside a Silas in the yeah. mid lane can oh, yeah. definitely be very, very scary, uh, augmented by Zayas picking up something pretty strong, Bruisery on the top side. Exactly, and almost guaranteed you think Zayas is going to play one of those types of champions. Is it going to be an Aatrox, Orione, or something along those lines that could be a strong pairing? So it's it's tough. I am almost more afraid of the set 20 from this point, even though I associate <laughs> owners more, much more with the Rel. Pick your poison, and they said no. Um, we'd prefer not to. Uh, that can be up to owner if you would like. And so we'll see whether it is going to be the Rel or the Sejuani. Yeah, this is this is going to be an interesting choice. I mean, I think if they go Sejuani here, oh, they're going towards okay. double Ooh. melee pairings. But instead, it's going to be the Nocturne. So denying some of the ability, I think, of the Shy to play through side lanes. Potentially, you know, you're worried about some sort of side lane picks, some ability to one three one. This really makes that difficult. And it also, if you have a flanking pick coming in from Zaya, some sort of a dive buddy there alongside Faker and Guma, or excuse me, an owner, it could be really tough because you can turn off the lights, throw the stolen Maokai ult, and then potentially have Zaya coming in on the flank. And for Weibo, I think one of the consistent issues is that you want to try and get a strong bot lane, which they did, uh -huh. even though obviously the uh, Renata and the Draven are quite strong. But it means that then you have to deal with Zaya's getting counter pick. Right? And, and Zayas, his Yone has been taken away. We'll see what else he can bring out against the Aatrox here. As Zhao Hu 
have of course been a large number of mid bands already. Is actually going to go for the Ari here. Yeah, so the Ari is going to be locked in. Is that an insta lock? Okay, there we go. So the Gwen going to be locked in here for Zeus. Something that has been picked into him in the past, but I, I won't uh, won't talk about it too much. If you are a T1 fan, I imagine that that is definitely going to cause some pain. But this is really really fun. Zeus really fighting fire with fire there towards that top side once again into the Shai's Aatrox. It's going to be interesting. We haven't really seen Gwen do that well at Worlds, to be honest, because it's one of these picks that takes a long time to turn online. And I feel like you've even seen Zayas play the opposite in this matchup, where he's going for the Lethality build on Aatrox and really kind of has earlier and more powerful power spikes, because this Gwen is going to need a couple items before you really start to outshine what the Aatrox can do. That being said, if they can get to that point, T1 has an incredible 1-3-1. One, one. They really can attack those side lanes so heavily with the Nocturne as well. And you do have that flanking top laner that I was talking about as the final piece, Sol and Maokai ult. You have the hostile takeover, you have the Nocturne ult, you have a flanking Gwen. All of this being thrown at you with the lights turned off is so hard to deal with. And my expectation as well is that with a lot of attention should go again towards the bot lane. We'll see how the Shy can recuperate after a pretty rough game one. Exactly right, but fist bumps have come out between our coaches. It is time to get onto the rift for game number two. There is match point on the line for T1 and Weibo could bring us to a best of three here at Worlds 2023. And I think everyone is aligned in just wanting as many games as possible here in this final. The last couple of years have been pretty good as far as games in the finals are concerned. And so hopefully they can bring us to one of those, even if it could uh, bring some heart attacks here to the Gochok <laughs> Sky Dome. I imagine that it uh, could be a difficult time. Yeah, since 2018, it's only gotten better, right? We got two free zeros, that's not so great. A free one, and then back-to-back -back free twos. Yeah. And those are the most fun and stressful. Certainly the and most fun. stressful and the most fun, Chronically, You're exactly right. And here we are into game number two. Weibo gathering up towards this bottom side. And T1 not going to be walking too close uh, to where all five members were positioned. So no, uh, nothing to worry about too much. And uh, you guys can remember, you can log into your ride account on lollysports.com and watch Worlds Live to earn exclusive Worlds emotes and icons. And we'll see whether Weibo or T1 are going to be flexing any of those uh, here in, t in uh, the game. And you can see that side lane ward here from Weibo trying to maintain side lane advantage. They have to be winning out in this 2v2. They need to utilize that Callista to be the one stacking dragons much like T1 did last time. But T1 did take the time. Zayas went in, got that deep ward, so then I have full info on where Weiwei is going to be starting, is going to be looking for this top towards bot clear, because it's going to be this classic Weibo playstyle that we have seen so much of at Worlds, focused towards bot with the Kalista. You have to have it. Also have both junglers pathing towards the bot side of the map, but obviously Weiwei going to be way stronger early on owner, mainly looking to cover in case they do uh, see Weiwei show up in the bot side. Do note that they do have a ward on his blue, so the T1 bot lane is very aware as, oh, yeah, the bot flash lane! Yeah, already out from Gumiyushi. His light's relatively low as well, but that is definitely a trade that goes incredibly well here for Weibo. Zayas also taking a fair bit of damage towards this top side. Weibo Gaming, they are not backing down yet. Yeah, it's getting spicy here early on. Chris trades out his heal, but they get the flash off Guma, the ignite off Caria. Light pretty low as well, but they can just push this in, uh, potentially look to reset, and maybe if Weiwei is coming down here, set themselves up in a great position, but look at Owner looking for this wrap around here. Yeah. Shahu likely can walk it out, but we'll see if he's forced to use the summoner. Should, he's level two, so doesn't have it. There's the flash chain, that is gonna get the flash out from Shahu. His owner is gonna back away. We'll have his spell shield available. Not going to be too worried about any charms or anything like that. It is kind of a, a repeat of what happened in mid lane last time, though. And then Faker was the one punished by Weiwei with that missing summoner. So we'll have to see if Weiwei can get around mid lane and help Shahu out again. Big difference this time around is that Owner doesn't actually have Pryo in his bot side last time. Could go very aggressive because of Zayas having the Pryo. Not going to be the case here. And you see as well, he wants to harass, but he needs to respect that Light and Crisp have shoved in that ball wave and can rotate over at any moment's notice. And falling behind with your Nocturne early can be a bit rough. Exactly. And Owner spent the time to do that. So he's only completed the three camps. Weiwei is about two full camps ahead now at this point as he's going to finish up the Gromp before the Wolves are completed there. So we'll have a little bit more tempo on the map. 
White just going to take this early recall here as they've bounced the wave on bot side. Chris making sure there's no sort of a freeze going on because Guma had to take a super early base and a horrible buy as all he was able to get was the refillable on that first base. So Guma's going to be in a, a pretty tough spot when you compare with what Light has on the other side. Yeah, it looks like Light pretty happy to go towards the Callista that was so incredibly effective for T1 in the last game. And once again, it's a composition from T1 that, like we've been talking about, does want to have these advantages around the map, does want to get towards these Drakes trying to play for these side lanes, because if you don't have that tempo advantage, things can go wrong as the Shy does take a bit of damage here from Zayas, but just some Biffo back and forth between the two top laners, and both of these champions having a fair bit of sustain. That's so a good, uh, right. yeah, good adaptation as well from uh, Weibo. Uh, instead of opting in the Silas uh, ban, they make sure that the Ash is taken away. I think Ash in particular can make any Callista lane really hard to play out. And by making sure that you also deny it to Guma and Karia, who can flex it. Don't know if they actually want to opt into that. Uh, but have done it, of course, in the past. Secure yourself a good early matchup. And we'll see if they're able to push it further, particularly if you can get an early kill on the Draven. Could be big as Wei Wei. Yeah, Ward is here as well. Zayas going to be ghosting immediately. There's a twisted advance. Zayas does create some space, though, on the Bramble Smash. Puts it, pushes him closer to home. He will have to go back. And now with the Ghost on cooldown, a little bit more susceptible to those ganks. And nicely timed on the skip and slash there from Zayas. Pops the Ghost early, has the E buffered as the twisted advance comes through. So he ends up on the opposite side of Wei Wei. So the Bramble Smash can't knock him back. And now Owner on the invade here, trying to put on some pressure again. Oh, that's a really high value vision cone there for Wei Wei. Spots both the ward and owner. And look at the pickaxe advantage. So there's no way that Wei Wei can fight. He hasn't based yet. Owner did go back to base, has that additional AD. And Wei Wei knows he can't win that. Yeah, and the whole time Faker is backing towards that top side as well. And so they know they can't go and contest that Gromp. It should mean that Owner can collect himself this wolf camp as well. So the advantages in the jungle are continuing to blossom here for T1. But on the bottom side of the map, Light still holding that advantage. Yeah, it's big there for T1, though, because it turns what was a really rough play, a gank towards Zeus, into a really big win. He immediately teleports back, is able to get Pryo. The Shy hasn't had a window yet, and they use that to get Owner uh, faster to his level 6, with him now having a CS lead. And something we haven't talked about at all, it's going to be AD Ari, because he is playing Fleet for work, and he has the Kirchi's Shard. So oh, yeah. I think it is going to be Static Shiv Rush. I think this is going to be AD Ari. We've seen quite a lot of this online. Uh, this is kind of the new evolution of what we were seeing with AD LeBlanc and that sort of style. I'm not sure if he is going to go like full on AD on hit or more just that similar build where you go Shiv uh, into Lich Bane and play the Night Harvester as well. That's the most common one I've been seeing online. But obviously trying to be able to side lane and trying to be able to kind of slam home an advantage here as this range versus melee matchup into Faker. So it's a very different style of Ari than we just saw. And I'm excited to see it because I think this is the first pro game that I can recall seeing it in. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. So interested to see what Xiaohu is going to be able to get done on this version of the Ari. And I have to have a feel that uh, the Ari AD variety should be better in lane uh, against Faker as well. Don't really need to land as many spells if you just right-click people. I like that idea. But Weibo going to be able to grab themselves the first Drake. Should mean the Scuttle here as well from Weiwei is getting double duty done. And they are going to be able to grab this off the back of their very, very, very supreme control of this bottom lane. Yeah, this all goes back to the level one. Uh, Light and Crisp playing it out early on very, very well. And one of the things that we haven't really talked about yet uh, that the Draven can struggle with is not having a jungler that can enable you. As I say, that owner is in top. Yeah, Zayas dashing forward. The needlework is out. Snip, snip. Going to connect, but doesn't do too much. And in goes Ona. The flash oh! out oh, was incredible from the Shy. Ona gets taken down to, oh my goodness, about one health, but will be able to walk away. But I don't think he's going to be excited about ganking the Shy anytime soon. Although Zayas is just going to go. That is just not fair. That is the Shy encapsulated. The massive outplay into the overstay. He has the 1v2. He likes his odds in the 1v1. And that is such a costly death because he has no TP. Gives up first blood with two stacked waves at his tower. That is catastrophic that for is Weibo's so chances. Unfair. That is it. So initially, he outplays it. Gets the uh, Q while dashing back. Denies the fear. 
And then he goes back in. Not only is it Zayus getting a kill, which in this oh. Snowbully matchup is extremely rough, but it also means that Owner's first ult was a success. The first ult on Nocturne is so big, he gets his early Ultimate Hunter stack, he gets a ton of assist golds, and that was an unforced error. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he eat in, right? You could just stay at your tower and farm it up. He didn't want to lose the wave, but he's the one who goes aggressive. Now he's going to get zoned off the bot wave, so T1 Whoa. punishing so heavily here. Yeah, the flash forward from Carrier finds the handshake this time. The Infernal Chains come in, he's lit on fire, he's feared, and Kumayushi catches in. It's the Shy getting way down in this game now as Weibo have their bot lane up top. Zayus will not be an easy dive here. He is healthy and he's got the ultimate back. They're gonna look for it though. Yeah, we'll see what he can get done here. The Flash Twisted Advance comes in, and now Zayus just trying to do what he can to stay alive. It's working! And he's gonna be able to dash back towards the minions. Now Faker turns up, he's got his own nature's grasp, but Shahu is gonna join this one, and Zayus is running the wrong direction. We'll see how much time he's gonna be able to buy here, because maybe this is an execute as he heads toward the turret, and there it is! Oh! Oh my god, everything is going T1's way. It's the Shy. Now shows up in the third lane. Top lane didn't work, bot lane's not working. Hey, let's check out mid lane. <laughs> Worked out a little bit better here. As you can see, Owner walks away with half of his health bar. The Shy able to uh, win out in that one. But man, that was a lot of things that happened. Chronicle, break it down for us. And, and it is Weibo opting in when they've already gotten the win, trying to get too much out of the play. Because yes, Guma gets a kill. The early cash in for the Draven is really rough with the Shy going down but they got the Herald. They already, they can play that a little bit slower, try to zone away Zayus, and then crash the Herald, get a ton of plates into light, and then try to play from there. But they try to get more, and it backfires. And I think they're feeling a little bit of that sense of desperation. You lose game one, things start going bad in game two. You feel that you need to get even more. But T1 in such an incredible spot here now, and that kill for the Draven was so critical, because Draven from behind, is such a weak champion, but when you're able to snowball, it can really be a different story. And he's now three, 400 gold ahead of his opponent. Yep, exactly right. And uh, okay, Faker diving in here towards Shahu. Of course, this is our featured matchup, thanks to Mercedes-Benz. And some scuffle, but not too much more than that. We are just going to back away. So I got a little bit overexcited. That is fine, Carrier going to be snared here for a moment. Skumushi down here, like you say, with that extra money that is Draven didn't work out for him. Last time he played it, of course, in the finals against Gen G. Hasn't played it this tournament yet, though, and this is one of his favorites. And next comes the setup for the Ocean Drake. Weibo already picked one up early, and with the Kalista, really want to try and opt into this. We haven't really talked about the scaling aspect. Uh, between these two teams. I think that both teams have some parts that feel like they scale really well, particularly the Senna, uh, and I think that Maokai remains very high in value just by the virtue of his ultimate. But on the flip side, particularly with Zayus already getting ahead and Owner starting to stack his ultimate Hunter, if Weibo don't snowball objectives early, I think it's going to be such a nightmare trying to play into this T1, because they can get so much in the side and collapsing becomes really hard because of the Nocturne. And the build from Jim Shahu, I'm finding a little bit confusing because you know he did start with the Kirchi shard, and now he's going into what looks like a Leandries here. So you know, it looked like instead we've backed off yeah, like I've, five patches or something. I, like. I think we've seen this before. It reminds me of what Showmaker used to do. I think it was LeBlanc. It might have been Ari versus Galio, where you go fleet just and leaning. early AD just to have an extra etch in lane. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot of gold that you invest, and as we can see, Faker, uh, not even taking into account first strike gold, has been able to stay on parity on the Silas. Absolutely, and it's going to make it that much more difficult when you're talking about in the 5v5s, dealing with Guma and dealing with some of these champions in the back line that he's going to be trying to burst down. Uh, that job becomes that much harder when you don't have the extra electrocute damage, when you don't have that early mythic completion. But it is going to be Weibo taking the second dragon here. We know it's not going to be a Chemtech oh. Soul, so it should be a good one. Yeah, and it's also going to be a Teleport in T1. Not wanting to give this one up as Faker turns up. Nature's Grasp going to guarantee the dragon. The hostile takeover chasing Weiwei, but just dissipates before it gets there. Once again, hey. it's going to be a Cloud Soul. Love to see it. I could imagine that uh, Weiwei is pretty upset about that. But remember, we're taking the Drake for water's uh, sake. And there's a fight towards this top side. The Shy taken down to about 50% health. He's trying to avoid the potential needlework. There were none more remaining. And Zayas is going to back away. But remember, 
We've teamed up with Amazon Web Services for a new campaign called Take the Drake for Water's Sake. For every ocean drake taken, AWS will make a donation to water.org. That drake was the 47th ocean drake slain since World's 2023 Swiss stage. And we can have it both ways. We get the ocean drake and still a cloud soul. I know, isn't it glorious? It's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely fantastic. We've washed off the chemtech with the ocean. <laughs> And then it's now windy. Now we're, now we're yeah. enjoying ourselves in the breeze. Oh, yeah. it's just fantastic. Well, and Zayas from this far ahead of the shy, Cloud Soul would be terrifying if he's oh. going to be able to get that. It's actually so good on Gwen. Wavo are pushing heavily on bot side. If the Shy walks up, he could just be dead again. Everfrost gets the slow. Chain Lash is going to come down as well. Faker doing a fair bit of damage. Did invest his stolen ultimate there. I believe it was probably timing out relatively soon. Trying to get some value as in goes Ona. Finds the paranoia, but you can see the Shy is going to be all right. He even gets a cheeky little shield there with the Dawning Shadow Light, not wanting to leave it up to chance. I mean, this Aatrox is going to have such a tough time. He is going for the Lethality build, and he's doing it from very far behind. You know, closing in on 40 CS deficit. He is going to be obviously able to pick up some of this to even that out a little bit, but the additional kill is also in Zayas' pocket. And this is a matchup where, as the Gwen, when you get through those earlier stages, you can outscale. When you're getting towards multiple items, it just kind of gets better for you. So the Shy is going to have to turn into an incredible Whoa. performance, and we can see it in the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. It is heavily favored towards Zayas, who had a really good game one and is set up for success here in game two. And I tell you what, if you're a Zayas fan, you're feeling absolutely fantastic that he's having this kind of performance in a final. Because these have been the times where he has crumbled in the past, and so far it's been back-to-back -back games where he is the guy. And this has been the story for this T1 roster. You know, they have been so close so many times. Four times they have lost in an international game five and not been able to claim that big title they've been chasing, but Zayas showing up so far. Yeah, another teleport to come in here as they do manage to secure this Rift Herald. We'll see where the Weibo can get themselves out of here. Light gonna be hostile takeover, but he's the only one, and now Zayas looking for the target. Faker dives in though as well. He's gonna collect the first with the help of Ona. The Shy goes down, the rest of Weibo will scatter, but they do get the objective and only lose one for now. And Weibo gonna be happy that they, at the very least they did get the Herald, but they did have to invest a lot. Teleport used by T1, but outside of that, and Gumiyushi's clans, not too much look on the other end. No flash for Weiwei, no flash for Light. Those are going to be big cooldowns in the possible fight for Soul Point that I think Weiwei was going to be looking for in about two minutes. That stolen Maokai ult from Faker got incredible value. Weibo was kind of panicking. They had to make a run for it here. And Weibo are able to secure it, but it's Faker on such a good angle, coming in from the top of your screen, able to find this stolen Maokai ult. Weiwei uses his to just try to disengage the hostile takeover, but look at the angle here from from Faker, everyone from Weibo sent packing. They're trying to line up to avoid it, but the flashes have to be used. And that is with Zhao, who's doing so much heavy lifting. Keeps Karia and Guma out of the fight. Karia was also unable to hit anyone, and he's giving me really big barrel energy with the amount of things <laughs> that haven't been able to hit. But even with that, because Zeus has already accelerated and Owner and Faker are there with him, uh, T1 is still able to push their lead aggressively and get more gold onto their carries. And similar to how we saw last game, Zay is building, he's building more towards that side lane. He's going to be going for Nasher's second. It's not going to be Cosmic. It's not going to be Zonia's about that 5v5 straight up. So this is going to give him so much power in those side lanes. They have Owner behind him, and they're going to continue pressuring these side lanes constantly. When you're winning that 1v1 heavily, as long as Owner is there, to back you up, you're never going to lose the 2v2. Oh, this is so difficult. Dustbringer is going to connect. They do have to use the ulti, and that is going to do it. Dawning Shadow does fly forward there as well. And once again, they just have to get out. And I believe, did, did uh, Owner even use the ultimate? No, know. and yeah. and that's going to be the fight for T1 looking way better, right? In 25 seconds till the Drake spawns. And now, Crisp doesn't have his ultimate, and neither does Xiaohu. It's going to be really tough, and the flashes aren't going to be up either. You look at Light, he's not going to have his flash. He doesn't even have his cleanse yet. This feels like a really tough one for them to fight, and Zayas is going to be able to knock down this turret on the bot side to get even more gold in their pockets prior to it. Snip, 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 and oh down goes the turret. That is the first one of the Ooh. game. He is looking completely unanswerable. He is so far ahead in the majority of metrics right now as the Rift Herald is going to park itself in the mid lane immediately. That turret bot lane should be answered, and there goes the charge. So T1 are going to lose one, and the more important one, you'd have to say. But still, I mean, Who's going to do stuff about this? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the no lady one. with the scissors. It's, it's also Zayus getting a turret, the nice first turret, which is would be some much needed gold for Weibo. Now they're going to try and contest the Drake with very little vision. 
Well, Zayas on a flank angle to here as well. Crisp going to be spotted, but he does put that ward down. That is going to get there. The Drake going down very, very low, and now the paranoia comes in. Faker looks for the Spirit Rush, and he does find it. The hostile takeover is massive, as they get rid of Light immediately. Weiwei taken down for the double kill for Ona. Xiaohu now trying to get some damage in the back, and it does take down the Nocturne, but it's Chris fighting on the bottom side of the map, but Kumiuchi is going to cash in once again, and T1 wipe the fight. And it's T1 winning everywhere. The fight breaks down into multiple skirmishes, and they outplay, they outfight, they get all all the kills, it is seven to one. They're gonna take the dragon, the only thing that was working for Weibo in this game. And it's again, I think that sense of desperation. They don't have a great vision set up. They don't know from which angles T1 are gonna be coming. And owner has his ultimate available. And there are a couple of key ultimates that aren't there, right? You don't have the Maokai ult, that, or uh, rather the uh, uh, Senna ult. And that's such a big defensive cooldown. And again, look how they orchestrate this. Faker comes in from the top. Owner turns off the light. The hostile takeover comes across everything all at once. And it's so difficult for Weibo to be able to effectively communicate how to play out this team fight. So everyone scatters. They're all flashing, every man for themselves. And when you go into that kind of fight against T1 with this composition, you are sure to always lose. And I tell you what, I'm really enjoying the use of the paranoia as well as the hostile takeover because something that has been difficult for a lot of our Renata players to deal with is getting in the right positions to get that ultimate off without as much notice, right? Because it's relatively telegraphed. But if the lights are all off and then this wave comes across you, it's not a lot of reaction time to deal with that if everything else is going on as well. Additionally, Guma was able to pick up another kill. So this Draven is by no means the main carry of T1, but now Zeus is fed, Guma is fed, and Owner is fed. So, oh, they might get a catch here, not gonna find carry out, but there's so much that you need to deal with. Exactly right. And just quickly, win probability powered by AWS definitely starting to trend towards T1 in this game. 7-1 in kills, but at the beginning of the game, you could see there on the graph, Weibo was set, certainly getting themselves into decent positions. We'll see whether they can claw some of that back. It is only a 4,000 gold lead here for T1 so far. Definitely surmountable. And while we haven't talked as much about this Draven, and you said it, he's been getting these kills, he's actually the richest member on T1. He's the richest person in the game now at this point, which is kind of crazy. Regal. After how yeah, badly yeah. this early game started, he has been cashing in, and Weibo trying yeah. to start something here. Here's another one, the Nature's Grasp. They all line up behind, but it's a decent charm to come through there. Hostile takeover for some phenomenal disengage, and it looks like T1, they don't want to deal with it. Faker dashes over the wall. Remember, they don't have a turret here. The charm is going to split them. Carrier tries to get oh. He goes forward and then just explodes and then Ona thinks that that's his moment. It's a double again for this Nocturne and he survives. The logistics protocol coming in from Carrier to make sure that the Nocturne doesn't burn down. It's a massacre. Weibo again try to get something and initially the play looks good. But I think the sidestep from Carrier there, he doesn't get caught. And with Renata alive, he becomes so hard. While all of that was happening, the Shy was rotating over. Say he's just backed. Yeah, Zayas isn't even here. They decide, hey, we gotta go, we gotta go now. We're falling behind. The initial play looks good as Owner gets chunked down so incredibly low. Shahu flying in, but this is the side set that you're talking about right here as Shahu goes for it with the last charge there. Both Guma and Carry a beautiful sidestep. And then Crisp gets thrown oh, in. No. But it's a flash out from Guma. It's a turn, and it is the one shot from the Draven. And the one shot from the Nocturne as well, using himself as a bullet into that back line and secures the kill on to Xiao, who also the Dustbringer, I believe, got the kill in the first place. So this Nocturne is just massive. And it is, again, also a testament to how powerful Renata is. Owner can go for these mega aggressive plays, knowing that as long as he kills his target, he will be able to be bailed out by the rest of his team. And honestly, even if he dies from this position, because yeah, the carries are yeah. so fed, it, it's going to be worth it, right? As long as you're creating space for Guma, for Zayas, for Faker, even if it is that one-way trip here for the Nocturne, it's going to be such a value play, as long as they can follow up. And T1 have been on the same page. Weibo seem like they're only answer is just forcing more and more fights. You can't win side lane. You can't win 5v5. Your objective stacking has been stopped. 
It is getting close to checkmate in game number two. It's really hard as well, considering the fact that T1 had already built themselves a 1-3-1 one, one composition. There is no comp in the game that is more just win more, right? Because you have win conditions that build upon themselves with a composition like this, where Zayas and Faker can get control of these side lanes all game long. Tempo, something that Weibo is going to have to really, really muscle. Oh. Yeah, that is a, a bit of item in advantage. Um, yeah. And, and when the Shy shows up to a team fight, he is going to have to be absolutely perfect to get anything done because you are so squishy. If you can't get that first kill for the Dustblade proc to be able to survive, you are going to be paper because one little CC hits you, Guma is going to kill you instantaneously. He's got zero armor, he's got zero HP purchased. So this H Rocks is going to be really squishy. Uh, additionally, Weibo, after game number one, obviously tried to pivot, try to play much to a bot side, and even with them, Setting Guma up for a deficit. The, the main issue is just the other lanes. T1 has been able to get the counter pick towards top side twice. And Weibo, you gotta imagine, if T1 is able to play it out from here, have to try something else because this blind Aatrox, even when protected with bans, just isn't working out. And I think we have to talk about the journey that Owner has had. I mean, he is one of the players that has been so criticized throughout yeah. this year. And how good has he been in this series? How good has he been at Worlds? And this whole tournament, exactly. And on tanks normally, right? But this Nocturne performance, he is playing reserved. He is going in at the right times. This is an Owner that is playing extraordinarily well. And it also goes back to when Owner initially looked to be his most dominant. His Lee is his most iconic champion, right? Yeah. It's more the carry style as we get a charm. Yeah, Faker is going to break it. Oh, no. He uses it in order to close distance back again, I guess. Um, but never mind. No nothing too much more going to happen. T1 with the opportunity to stack four Cloud Drakes. When you talk going to start with the second. Exactly. When you talk about the, the comfort and the ability to go towards things like the Lee Sin, I think that has been somewhat indicative of, of what T1 have wanted to do here at Worlds and the meta shifts that they have brought in as owner, maybe looking for a fight. Yeah, they find the Shy, but he just umbrally dashes over the wall. He will keep himself alive as Weibo just regrouping once again, spotting out the members of T1 moving back from that Drake. And now moving towards the Baron pit. It is 25 minutes into the game, and uh, T1 hasn't gone for a Baron just yet. You can see that they have changed a little bit. Very reserved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Very much. laughs> uh, they've, they've really matured, you know? <laughs> the Baron's been uh, alive they're, for they're, five they're, minutes. Yeah, now they give it like five minutes. <laughs> this is not my T1. <laughs> I think because they were near the Baron Pit, though, they uh, they have remembered. So I imagine we're going to be playing around that now. Oh, okay. I thought you yeah. were going to say it counts as them starting and just walking by, <laughs> no, saying no. hi to an old yeah. friend. No, I don't. I don't think that that's necessarily <laughs> how it works. But it's just been so fun to watch T1 because they have been on the forefront of these meta shifts, right? You know, Caria, when it was this double AD carry meta in the bot lane, he was incredible. Being able to bring that back, being able to have Owner on Lee Sin, Guma here on this Draven, being able to see these iconic picks and their comfort is working out so well. Oh, Paranoia comes in once again as the flash out from the Shy may not be enough. They're under the turret. Owner was tanking it up. And Zayas is going to finish it in a turret. Should now be next on the clock. And because the rest of T1 is standing guard, Weibo can't try and turn the fact that Owner is towards bot into a Baron. So they just have to watch their teammate get killed through Merc Treads and a, uh, a Hex Drinker as well. Yeah, and teleport still available. So it was only ever going to be a 4v4 anyway. It is a 4,000 gold lead in top lane. Almost 4,500 gold in top lane. That is just ridiculous now at this point this lead for Zayas is becoming just a nightmare for them to deal with he has the cosmic drive finish now he's he's so far ahead of the pace of this game that no one can answer him and it just felt bad for Chris every time he's popping a sentinel it's just been to watch his teammate die and, and he doesn't even get to watch because no. the lights are out <laughs> he doesn't even get to oh, that's that's why would you have to remind me I, was, I know it's very cruel that's painful I'm still remembering back to the Shy out playing a 1v2. And then, yeah. And then uh, walking back into the 1v1. Ooh, As Owner, oh no. he's going to get charmed. It's a decent amount of damage, but uh, he is very far ahead. And he will just be able to wander his way out. And the problem for me now is that reactively, the Weibo comp, individually, they can pick up very well. But if you don't get to the objective first, it becomes very hard to contest. And right now, that's not the case. Yeah, they're definitely not there first. The Baron is down very, very low. There's the Paranoia. As they look to try and burst down the Baron, they do collect it. And now, the Jacked ultimate comes through from Faker. Now Zayas dives in. He's taken matters into his own hands. He hasn't taken any damage. Weiwei has to run away. He gets thrown back by the Bramble Smash, but the damage is already being done. Faker goes gold and does have to flash. His light's doing a fair bit of work. 
with these Rens into the back line. But T1 just took a Baron and they got five out. And Gwen truly is immune. Zeus doesn't care, dives into multiple people and uses his lead very aggressively. And this is where I think you really see the gold difference. Weibo get close in a couple of situations, get some health bars low. And if they had items, that might have been enough, but instead they just have to watch T1 walk it off. The only thing invested is a flash and a stopwatch from Faker. Exactly, and Weiwei just can't actually close the gap to even contest the Baron because the Hostile Takeover comes through, then the Stolen Maokai ult comes through. By the time he's out of CC, the Baron is already gone, and Zeus is running rampant in the back line. T1 just getting further and further ahead. Guma still doesn't even have boots, by the way, but he does have a Bloodthirster and three items. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep, Kamushi just having a good time, and he knows that he is not the main character necessarily. He's just been able to sit back. And it's because of the Cloud Drakes! And, it uh, doesn't yes. need boots! Oh, that is true! <laughs> Everyone's Cassiopeia on T1 now. <laughs> Be prepared. Uh, everybody else actually bought boots, though, which is a little bit of a shame, not making up for it. The Rebel Baron power play already at 2-2-2-2. That was actually cool that I looked up at the top there when it was uh, a whole lot of twos. Nice. And one minute until a potential soul point for both teams. T1 at a 10,000 gold lead though, or at least very, very close. Should be able to grab advantage and secure that for themselves. And, and this is the problem. Once you fall behind against a one for one comp with a Nocturne, like, what do you do? If you try to collapse, Nocturne presses R, you don't know how many people are coming, you don't know how many people are responding, and T1, they're looking for more. Yep, Shahu already taking a bit of poke damage. Light will turn up. As four members are here, teleport event not available for the Shiva. They dive in, the turret goes down, the needlework just rips the center to shreds. And Zayas just by himself destroying everyone. Hostile takeover comes in, Light has the cleanse, but you can't cleanse death. It's a triple kill for Zayas, and they'll get to work on the inhibitor. It might just be the game right here. Zayas playing like his namesake. Oh God, this guy is going crazy in the finals. Just and extraordinary as this helps clear up this second Nexus turn and T1 at match point already. And by the end of that game, the kill score is 1 to 14. That was a little bit uh, even more one sided than the last game, and T1 really on the back of Zayas, the man who had been performing. Less good, we should say, in some of these finals in the past, really showing up here today. This is exactly what we've been touting for this guy for so long. But T1 are one game away from clinching their fourth world's title. But before we get into break, let's have a look.